<clears throat> Thank you very much. I will do my best uh, to keep within the 15 minutes, even maybe a few minutes earlier. Uh, I didn't uh, prepare a PowerPoint uh, or something because I didn't want this to be something um, in a way systematic. Uh, I wanted to share some experience that uh, we had uh, as a Confucius Institute uh, well, basically over the few last few years, and then it uh, something really happened with, with COVID-19 and the situation of moving online and, 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 and doing these kind of things. Uh, it's not only teaching, it's not only what's happening in the classroom, it's not only uh, what's happening on how to mark the students or how to stop them uh, from cheating or, or anything else. Uh, so uh, basically what, what we tried we were established in, in 2012, uh, so eight and a half years ago. And over the period of time, we had more than 32 teachers at some point, uh, Chinese volunteers and, and government sponsored teachers who were teaching in Croatia, who were teaching in uh, eight different cities. Uh, we were spending a lot of resources on not only getting the teachers here and getting the work permits and everything else that's necessary for them to, to work. Uh, but we also uh, spend a lot of money from Hanban on um, accommodation and many other uh, things. Uh, but one thing that uh, we did even before the COVID-19 situation started is, well, basically two things that helped us in the future. Uh, first of all, we always liked the digital part and we like the digital transformation we were concerning to do of our Confucius Institute. So over the period of the eight years, we were collecting uh, a lot of uh, useful equipment and useful resources that we could put at use for some other reasons. Of course, we didn't, <laughs> and said, uh, we didn't expect this, this to happen, but uh, we did uh, buy a lot of a lot of this kind of equipment and we already started using it before. Uh, cameras, uh, computers, uh, microphones, professional uh, equipment in this. Uh, we educated ourselves in, in, in recording and taking uh, videos and editing videos. Uh, we were buying uh, professional sets of uh, lightning uh, for, for vi doing videos uh, and maybe two years before the COVID-19 started we also started introducing more and more online learning uh, especially the flipped classroom uh, model that we started developing uh, in a way that we wanted to start with certain groups that would have not twice a week a normal Chinese class, but would have uh, once a week a live class and uh, uh, the same amount of time of pre-recorded lessons. They would preview before the lesson. So anything that the student professor would be basically telling them or teaching them and, and basically uh, just making them not interact with the teacher. Uh, this is something that they can do uh, in advance. This is what they can watch at home during the weekend or anytime they want. Uh, this is what we can record. This is the introduction to new words. This is the introduction to the grammar points of, of a certain lesson. Uh, and then what we wanted to do is uh, take any part uh, that's happening in the live classroom to be fully interactive and be fully uh, concerned to the student and what to the students need. So we can practice the basic skills, the, 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 the Koyu or the Tingli or Yuedu or uh, any other skill we have. So when whatever was happening in the classroom wasn't being the teacher speaking, it was the student speaking. It was the student doing, it was the student presenting. And this was the, the basic idea what we had uh, uh, maybe a few years ago when we started developing these kind of classes. And it showed out well, you know, we were starting with some pilot projects, we were starting with some pilot groups. Uh, we would save time because we didn't have to give uh, the same volunteer to be four, hour, four school hours per week in the, in the classroom. He could spend only two school hours per week. That means he could either have additional groups or he can have uh, four hours, but then it's again four hours of interactivity and not so much of, of him giving certain information that he could have uh, pre-recorded in advance uh, and of course 
overviewed with a lot of teachers, overviewed on methodology and given to the students in advance. Uh, and basically our we were preparing this for for a long, long time, and then uh, first groups basically that were officially enrolled in this started working on March 1st, uh, 2020 uh, for uh, just a few weeks before the coronavirus started. Uh, so basically we had everything settled up. We had pre-recorded lessons for, for certain uh, explanation points. We had uh, a learning management system in, in place. We had teachers who already took training for, for all these kind of uh, uh, things. Now, of course, not all of them, uh, just, just a few of them. They were supposed to start with beginner's levels of Chinese. And they were teaching like this for two or three weeks. Everything was perfect. And then the lockdown came and the whole Croatia got stuck. Uh, and basically, you know, uh, we, we saw a lot of primary schools and high schools and universities. They were like, oh, my God, we have to move online. What are we going to do? And for us, it was really a 24 hour change for us. On, on Friday, we were finishing our last uh, offline or live class in, in the classroom. And on Monday, we already had all our students online, already materials prepared, all the groups opened, everything started and basically didn't even feel this this change this was this was a good thing for us so uh why am i pointing out this because i think this was a good experience that uh, it's good to have you know think about the equipment you need because we were doing this before not because we were expecting to move online or we were expecting the covid it is just you know the the, the methodologies and the technologies of the 21st century and we were trying to do this because this is what we are supposed to do in 2021, 2020 uh, of this century, right? So it just, you know, this helped us uh, uh, move faster. But uh, one of the reasons we, we couldn't start doing this before is because we always had problems, you know, is the, it, we, you, you know, the weak link, you know, the, 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 the weakest, the chain is as strong as the weakest link. And the weakest link is usually the, the student, a single student who doesn't have a mobile phone, who doesn't have a laptop, who has uh, a very bad uh, internet connection or, or whatever at home. And you cannot just make students buy a better phone or buy a smartphone or buy a laptop. Or, or a scanner when we were starting to do something we were even considering you know how to uh, mark homeworks you should be ask them to write on a piece of paper and then scan it and then like because it's not everything can be done uh, in, in in modern tools most of it can and always but our teachers also wanted to see the handwriting real handwriting not with the mouse on a, on a on a on a display but on a piece of paper so how can you scan that and how can you do these kind of things and the problem is what can you ask the student to have of the equipment before this? And this is one of the reasons that were stopping us to start faster. But with COVID, you know, the government said school is online, everybody is online, everybody should have uh, computers, everybody should have uh, mobile phones or tablets. And they gave I think like 300 or 400,000 tablets to the primary school and high school students uh, over the period of the last one or two years, which also helped us that all our primary and high school students had this equipment that they can use to start learning online. And so I would say for us, it was an easy way to move from typical offline learning to online learning in the technical sense. But of course, over the period, we did learn uh, all the other problems that we are, that many of the colleagues mentioned today. It's the motivation of the students. It's the motivation of the professors. It's also how the professors are fast in using this technology. How are the students fast in using technology? And uh, many other uh, uh, problematic aspects on cheating and, and, and preparation, how much time do you need? for preparing the class uh, for, for online learning and this kind of things. But I don't want to concentrate on um, teaching Chinese language only. Um, 
I also want to mention, I, I said the Confucius Institute, right? So I, I want to uh, mention one or two things that also opened in this uh, situation. It is, it's meeting like this. It's, uh, you know, before the new normal, before the coronavirus situation, uh, everybody wanted to go traveling. If you're going for this kind of a conference, you would, you would go to Budapest. I was in Budapest for the teachers training for like five times over the last 10 years. It was, it was perfect. And I missed that. And I'm really waiting for all this to stop so I can, I can go back uh, um, uh, to Budapest for the, uh, for the uh, local teachers training and, and enjoy the, the, the company because, of course, there are problems in, in this way of communication. But again, it's, it's easier now to do it. It's easier to connect to some people. And you don't have to expect only the people who are able to come, who have the money to travel and who have the time to travel to share their knowledge, to share their network in these kind of situations. So we also started a few projects that probably wouldn't happen if the coronavirus didn't happen, uh, because it's not only how you are prepared, it's also how the whole community is prepared. You know, uh, if we were asking certain companies from Croatia or certain in, uh, agencies from Croatia to have a whole online meeting with us, uh, a year ago, they would say, like, you're crazy. Come here for the meeting or come here and we'll discuss or we'll go to China for a, for a conference of this kind. But they wouldn't spend a whole day watching a mobile phone or, or a laptop or something like that. Uh, and, and, you know, and this also cut costs. So uh, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, we finished a program that we were planning uh, for more than a year. It's called uh, Great World Media Festival. And the Great World Media Festival be cover will be covering creative industries, uh, not only from Europe, but also from China and connecting them in, in a certain way. And everything was planned. Everything was supposed to be like a great conference in Croatia, people coming from different European countries and from China and everything we were preparing. And then, you know, the world stopped. The, the borders were closed, the people didn't want to go anywhere, people were afraid. Uh, so basically, you know, we didn't know how to move and we moved it online. We, we, what we did is we, we, again, used the technology we had. And I would say a really good technology uh, to really make it not only this kind of like I'm looking to my computer and talking about something, but we started producing as, as a TV studio, studio and now we are producing more and more podcasts. We are producing more and more uh, programs that have higher quality and we are even discussing with uh, creation uh, private and public television uh, studios that are willing to share some of the programs that we are creating or are planning to create in the future because the, the, the quality of this is getting better from us and it's also possible for them to use on, on, on a TV level. So um, what we want to do is in, in the future uh, is we want to concentrate more on the video content, uh, not only video, but digital apps creation. Uh, virtual reality uh, and other uh, aspects that are helping us, you know, to from a small country, from a small Confucius Institute uh, to share our knowledge, but also what's more important, not, not our knowledge, but to share the knowledge from people from United States or, or from China or from other European countries who maybe don't have the opportunity to, to, to join us here, to, to spend their time. You know, um, I, I have a, a very good colleague in, in the UCLA Confucius Institute, and I don't think she's she has the time, I wouldn't say money, but I would definitely say time and, and everything to come here and spend a few days in Croatia to give a lecture. Uh, maybe she's willing to do it, but you know it could happen every few years. But using this kind of this kind of uh, uh, setting, it is allowing us to do it uh, more often. It's, it's allowing us to do it uh, basically on a weekly basis. Uh, and what also changed is people are now, ex you know, accepting this kind of format. Two weeks, two years ago or a year ago, if you said to the people, go and watch a podcast, at, at least in Croatia, or go and watch us on, on a YouTube stream at a certain time, they would say, why don't we do it live? Why don't we have a meetup in, in, a, in a 
bar or in a Confucius Institute or somewhere. But now we can see that the number of people who are coming to these kind of events significantly increased. We were having Chinese cultural lessons in the Confucius Institute, and sometimes 10 people or 15 people would show up. And now when we have live cultural lessons about the Chinese culture, uh, sometimes we have like two or three or four times this, the number of, of, of people attending the same event they would be attending before this uh, situation. So we found out that coronavirus really helped in the digital transformation, not only of our work, but of the daily life of uh, our students and people interested in the Chinese culture, Chinese language, and uh, ch business, doing business with China. And it really gave us the opportunity that we don't want to lose after the coronavirus stops. And this is what we are a little bit afraid of. We are afraid of that once the coronavirus stops, everybody will start moving back to the old normal without taking the good parts of the new normal and keeping them uh, for the future. And there are, we are already creating a new plan, a five-year plan for the Confucius Institute uh, that will implement a lot of the things that we learned and a lot of the things we did over the period of the last year uh, and that we are definitely keeping and that we are going to fight uh, a lot to keep even when the situation becomes normal and when people maybe will not be so much interested uh, in uh, using the digital tools uh, as they are uh, right now. Uh, so we hope that the positive change of digital transformation that happened to the, to the world during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is something that basically uh, will in a way continue even uh, after the pandemic is gone, as we hope it will be in the next one year or so. So uh, I also hope that uh, other colleagues here who are talking about this uh, will also consider what is good from uh, everything they are doing right now, and they will keep on using this even when we go back to the normal classrooms, when we go back to the whiteboards or the blackboards, when we start printing the papers again and when we start seeing our students. Uh, because I think we learned a lot about digital interactivity in the last period, and we hope this will, uh, this will continue uh, in the future. Thank you very much, and I hope I will hear more uh, interesting, uh, practical things uh, what are happening in the classrooms and other Confucius Institutes. Thank you very much.